Well, that person's not a real Christian. I'm a Christian and I believe that no one fucking cares, dude. You don't get to say who is and isn't a Christian. The person who believes they are or are not a Christian gets to say that. You don't get to say that. Jeffrey says, I know Christian nationalism is a running theme, for me at least. The latest discovery is dominionism. It looks uh, as if there is a semi-transparent effort by evangelicals to take over local school boards, create charter schools using public money in general, and plant the seeds for one of the seven pillars of the Christian takeover to both welcome and prepare for the second coming of Jesus. How do these people take themselves seriously? I swear to God. Uh, This pastor from Franklin, Tennessee is helping expose those efforts. This two minute clip is pretty scary. We, uh, if we think about how this could likely be implemented around the country, definitely in San Diego, and that's just uh, in the education pillar of their philosophy. I hear a lot about the Hillsdale College in Michigan has a lot of influence over this. So we've got this pastor, Kevin Riggs. I haven't watched this yet, so this is going to be my, my uh, little review of what this guy has to say. Uh, it says, Kevin Riggs says, Hillsdale, Davos, at government, Bill Lee, see education is one of the seven mountains to take over it, to hasten Christ's return and misguidedly advance God's kingdom. The agenda behind the charter school movement, I believe, comes from a a theology called dominion theology or dominionism. And it's based on the belief as Christians, we have a mandate to conquer the world and its systems. And by doing that, we will hasten the return of Christ. Within dominionism, there are seven mountains that they talk about that we are supposed to, as Christians to take over in order to advance the kingdom of God. And one of those mountains is education. Our governor and many of our state leaders, based on the churches that they go to that I know they're members of, would have at least heard these types of teachings that we have this mandate to overcome and to conquer. To impact our culture in ways that are not the traditional funding the Christian organization route, but that really may have greater kingdom gain in the long run by changing the way we approach things, in this case, the system of education in the country. And so within these churches, people are greatly encouraged to run for school board with the intention of making the public schools Christian. The idea of classical is really another word, really, for Christian. They may deny that, but if you read their literature, you'll pick up on key words where we want to teach virtue, talk about Western civilization, a particular brand of conservative Christianity they believe, our forefathers even believed in. instead of recognizing that our country was really built on humanistic principles, not Christian principles. And so this is a dangerous, dangerous thing. Charter schools that you're doing in Tennessee, how can we get that to come to other states? All of you uh, pastors who have church buildings should be working on starting a school. Many of these charter schools be religious? They cannot be. They are secular classical education schools. What is it, Hillsdale religious? Hillsdale uh, charter schools in our state will be public, Secular, classical. So it's just a shell company then? Thank you. Who's going to right? Thank you. Uh, You know, I believe as a Christian that we are called to advance the kingdom of Christ as well through sacrificial service, love, mercy, and grace, not intimidation and bullying, pushing our agenda without being upfront about what our agenda really is. Tennessee is moving uh, toward a theocracy. All right. Well, that was uh, terrifying. I mean, here's the thing. This is why I I, I like I like Bach. I like the they're indoctrinating our children bullshit, right? Because it's it's not a battle over whether or not children get indoctrinated. What it is is a a pissing contest or a tug of war over who gets to indoctrinate the children. Do I think children should be indoctrinated into trans ideology? No, I don't think they should. Do I think they should be indoctrinated into this nonsense, this Christian nationalism nonsense? No, absolutely not. I'm against indoctrinating children. And here's one thing that pisses me off about certain people, right? And I'll even say this right now. I know Colin Wright. Colin Wright's a really nice guy. He's a biologist. So he focuses mostly on the trans stuff, right? I get that, but I would like to see him put his neck out a little bit and challenge his audience and talk a little bit about how Christian nationalists are trying to indoctrinate our children too. Because maybe there's a bigger conversation about how we need to really dial back and look at our humanist principles and the fact that the the founding fathers weren't that religious. They were deists, right? It was pretty common back then to be that. They were baptized because they had to be baptized by law because, you know, that made a lot of sense. And so we're in the situation where it's like people are just revising history to fit their own narratives. And we get so caught up in like whether or not we're going to let 12 year olds cut their dicks off when it's like, Hey, there's, there's bigger things at play here. I will tell you this definitively. And this is a fact. And just like Ben Shapiro says, facts don't care about your feelings, right? People love facts. The hashtag truth coming at you right now. More people have been damaged by the church than it have been damaged by the 
trans crazy people. The trans ideology, the radical left, all that shit. More people have been harmed by the church, myself included. So when you look at these Christian nationalist f**ks, there are very few things that I will take up arms to fight in this country domestically. But I will tell you this, I will end lives over this. I will not live in Gilead. And you know who I can count on to be on my side here? Every gun-toting libertarian f**k that I do not want to live in a goddamn theocracy. The biggest threat to democracy is these crazy f because they are smart and they're organized. Christian nationalism has no place in this country. And Christians have overstepped themselves so many times. They're covert, lying f**ks. They're slimy f weasels. And it makes no, it's no surprise to me that when I go over here to uh, this, this Texas Observer article about the radical theology that could make religious freedom a thing of the past, I have this slimy weasel right here, Ted f***ing Cruz. Ted Cruz, representative of this. Now we're gonna, not going to go into this article. I don't want to spend too much time on it, but there's different ways to go about this. And it's very covert and it's subversive and it's f***ing dangerous. Now, while I agree that Again, we'll just use trans ideology because that's this whole like the, the, this 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 trend of transness that's like being pushed onto kids that are very susceptible to such things. But then again, I don't really see much difference between somebody going to a trans drag show thing and then a bunch of kids singing to a, a an effigy of human sacrifice. You know what I'm talking about? The crucifixion? There's a dead guy on a cross and children are expected to praise him. Lord, I lift your name on high. And I was a part of this, I was around this. And if you wanna be a Christian, like this guy right here, this fella, Pastor Riggs, I f with this guy, this guy is good. I like this dude, that's a Christian. Is it Old Testament Christianity? Is it real, you can sit here and be like, well, this guy's not a real Christian because of blah, 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 blah. And I get to say that because I'm a narcissistic stick. No, you don't get to say that. You don't have, here's something else that drives me nuts. Just because you're a Christian doesn't mean you get to say who it is and isn't another Christian. Well, that person's not a real Christian. That person's not a this. That person's, oh, I'm a Christian and I believe that. No one fucking cares, dude. No one cares. You don't get to say who is and isn't a Christian. The person who believes they are or are not a Christian gets to say that. You don't get to say that. I don't give a shit if they don't represent your belief system very well. I don't care. It's not your call. They're representing your belief system. Those are your people. Deal with it. Don't deflect responsibility. Maybe the problem isn't the people. Maybe it's the fucking belief system then, if that's the case. Are there a lot of Buddhists around being like, well, those, the Zen Buddhists aren't, aren't real Buddhists. How often do you hear that? You know, you know who does do that though? Islam, because Islam and Christianity, two peas and a mother pod. Absolutely nuts. I can't, Christian nationalism is one of the most disgusting things that I have to deal with on a daily basis. And I follow people who are Christian nationalists sometimes. And they're like, yeah, and like, like um, I'm going on this podcast with um, the slightly offensive guy. And I like some of his content. It's funny, but it's also just like clickbaity culture war shit. And the very little substance in any of it. It's just like, but it's fun, whatever, you know, do your thing. Get your followers, make your money, run your grift. I'm running my grift over here on Patreon right now. Uh, Patreon.com slash politically homeless. Uh, so anyways, <laughs> but we're going to get, it's like, it, you know, we had this disagreement about the Pledge of Allegiance, right? And I'm like, my kids will never pledge allegiance to a government to a country. You can be proud to be an American. I get that. We do some cool shit. We've done some cool shit. We've done some dumb shit, but my kids will not be pledging allegiance to a country because when they get to a certain age and they want to go live somewhere else because somewhere else happens to suit them better and they are free to go somewhere else because I'm pro freedom. You see how it is? You see the difference here? Because a lot of these mother all these Christian nationalists like to hashtag freedom on their goddamn tweets. And they like to believe that they're pro freedom because they're fo pro second amendment. <laughs> I guess that could be part of it, but it's not the whole damn thing. But if you're a Christian nationalist, you are not pro freedom, my friend. And you should never f say that. Because if you say that, not only are you a Christian nationalist and anti-freedom, you're a f liar, dude. You're a liar. There is nothing about Christian nationalism that supports freedom. And so no, my children won't be pledging allegiance to a goddamn flag. It's a symbol. It's cool. I'd be proud to be here. You could also think this place sucks and go somewhere else. I know I almost did. I was like, there's a time in my life when I, I really wanted to move to New Zealand. I'm kind of glad I didn't because of the COVID restrictions now. But I was like, man, it'd be cool to live in a country where if there's a, a nuclear exchange between the great powers of the country, I just probably will be okay. I'll just be on an island somewhere not really knowing what the fuck is going on. I want to live in a country where I, I, there's so much to ask too, as, 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 as a nationalist, maybe. We call me this, as a patriot, <laughs> whatever the fuck you want to call me here. If this makes me any of those things, let me know. But the things that just makes me a pragmatic human being to want to live in a place where people don't want to blow us up. We can be told, we've been told this for, for over and over and over again. It's like, well, these people hate our freedom and these people hate our freedom. And these people, it's like, we need a boogeyman. It was Saddam, it was Bin Laden. Now it's Putin. It's always some, it's always a boogeyman. And they always hate us because of our freedom. They never could have valid reasons to 
hate us because we destabilized entire regions or, you know, treat them like shit. It couldn't be that. It could be, it's because of our freedom, right? It's like, it's like, it's like some chick being like, she only hates me because I'm too good looking. It's like, no, she hates you because you're a f- cunt. That's what she hates. That's why she hates you. People don't like you because you're a bitch. Like Brendan Schaub. Brendan Schaub is the most American person that's ever existed because he can't even accept criticism of himself as anything besides haters being haters and hating them because he's great. No, Brendan, you're not funny. You're actually not even that fun to be around. I've been around you in person and you suck. You understand? And that's how America is. America is Brendan Schaub embodied into a, into a nation, manifest into a nation that can't accept criticism of itself because they think that you're only criticizing them because they're so awesome. It's stupid. It's like, no, you live in flamboyance and you rub it in people's faces and you're not that talented. And the only reason you're famous is because you have friends that are famous, right? Like that's why people don't like you because you overreached and you, you're kind of a dick. It's not because we're hating you because, oh, we are haters. Like and that's not it. You suck. And so I get it, man. It's like, that's that, that you know, I get it. Brendan Schaub is a representative of America because of his own narcissism. And I would like to not live inside of Brendan Schaub, but I feel like these people want that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God damn it.